Hello lovely people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our comparisons playlist. How can you differentiate between diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis? The former is associated with lupus. The latter is associated with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cryoglobulinemia, and sometimes C3 nephritic factor. A good doctor is the one who understands distinctions. The original videos containing those nephrology explanations are to be found in my 5-minute review playlist. A normal kidney is the kidney that does not let protein or blood end up in the urine. If you have nephrotic syndrome, you're losing lots of protein in the urine. If you have nephritic, itis means inflammation, your kidney is bleeding into the urine. Nephrotic syndrome, your kidney is losing protein. You get hypoproteinemia, low protein in the blood because there is high protein in the urine. These are the causes of hypoproteinemia. Nephrotic syndrome is here. It's a protein losing nephropathy. I love it. Kidney disease that loses protein. You end up with edema, which is pitting, dependent, transudate due to decreased oncotic pressure. It's important to understand that in case of nephrotic syndrome, you have generalized edema. But that's not unique medicosis. CHF and cirrhosis also have generalized edema. Here is what's peculiar to nephrotic syndrome. The periorbital puffiness, swelling or edema. Albumin, may he rest in peace, used to be responsible for maintaining my oncotic pressure to keep fluid inside the vessel. But now I've lost my albumin, lost my oncotic pressure, fluid is leaving the vessel, it's going outside, that's why I'm swelling. That's nephrotic syndrome. Nephritic syndrome, on the other hand, has itis. Itis means inflammation, your kidney is literally injured and bleeding. Nephrotic syndrome has four features. Nephritic has seven. Nephrotic, let's go. High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. Nephritic, itis, itis, inflammation. I'm inflamed, I'm bleeding with red blood cell casts. Mild proteinuria, mild edema. Not to be confused with the nephrotic range proteinuria and the generalized severe edema. Don't forget your two H's. The first H is hematuria. The second is hypertension with jugular venous distension. I also have kidney injury, so elevated B and creatinine, oliguria. When you're losing protein, it's nephrotic. When you're losing blood, it's nephritic. What if I'm losing both? It's nephrotic nephritic syndrome. Such as the two diseases that we're describing today, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis is inflammation of the glomeruli of the kidney, usually caused by immune complex deposition. The deposition of those immune complexes, which are made of antigens and antibodies, could be here subepithelial, could be here intramembranous, or could be here subendothelial, depending on the disease. Moreover, it could be primary, the problem originated in the kidney, which was started by a previous disease process, like lupus. Histopathology. Here are the diseases that cause nephrotic syndrome, and here are the diseases that cause nephritic syndrome. You're losing protein, you're losing blood. But here, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, you could be losing both protein and blood in the urine. So I get high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia, and hypertension, hematuria jugular venous distension, oliguria, high BON and creatinine, red blood cell casts in the urine, etc. Diffuse proliferative. What does diffuse mean? It means global. It means all of the glomeruli of your kidney are affected. What does proliferative mean? Hypercellularity. In this case, it is neutrophil proliferation. How about membranoproliferative? Membrano means it's going to involve the membrane. What kind of membrane? the glomerular basement membrane, which is between the endothelium and the epithelium of the glomerulus. It's going to be thickened and then it will split 
and will give you the tram track appearance. As you know, your blood is made of plasma and cells. When you're losing plasma proteins, nephrotic syndrome. When you're losing red blood cells, nephritic syndrome. All your body fluids come from the blood. The urine is no exception. In order for the kidney to make urine, we have to start with blood. And then we go here and we get filtered. Whatever is gonna end up in the tubule without reabsorption is gonna end up in the toilet. So here is a lovely blood vessel, all right, lined by endothelium, then the glomerular basement membrane, followed by the epithelium, which is what we call the podocyte, because it has feet. In French, le means feet. What happens in diffuse proliferative? All of your glomeruli are affected and you have proliferation of neutrophils with hypercellularity under the microscope. And you will see subendothelial immune complex deposits here under the endothelium. How about the second disease, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis? Well, it's called membranosa is gonna affect the membrane. We have two subtypes, type one and type two. Type one, you'll see subendothelial immune complex deposits, all right? It's under the endothelium, just very similar to diffuse proliferative. But there is also type two, where you have antibodies that go into the membrane. Oh, intramembranous deposits. That's why we call type two dense deposit disease. The deposits are immune complexes inside the membrane, into the glomerular basement membrane. So in diffuse proliferative, I will find my deposits here under the endothelium. How about in membranoproliferative? Well, it depends if you're talking type one, also here under the endothelium, we call them subendothelium. But if you're talking type two, they go into the basement membrane. Hashtag dense deposit disease. Whether you're talking about MPGN type one or type two, either way you can end up splitting the membrane, membrano, into two pieces, giving you the classic tram track appearance. How can I see those antibodies? You see them using the immunofluorescence technique. They will light up under the microscope like this. You can find the antibodies attacking your skin. They could be attacking your kidney. They could be attacking any other organ. And that was the essence of type three, hypersensitivity reaction. Go watch my immunology playlist. Does anyone remember fibrinoid necrosis? Here is membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis again. Type 1, here. How about type 2, into the membrane? Diffuse proliferative is associated with lupus. Membranoproliferative, however, is associated with hepatitis, cryoglobulinemia, C3 nephritic factor. Let's review diffuse proliferative. The patient has lupus. Diffuse proliferative is the most common and most severe subtypes of lupus when it affects the kidney. You have nephrotic and nephritic features, high protein in myoria, low protein myemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia, hypertension, hematuria, granular subendothelial immune complexes. Why do you call it proliferative? Because they have proliferation of neutrophils. The kidney is inflamed, it's injured and bleeding. You also see hyaline thrombi in the lumen of the capillaries. And then these subendothelial complexes are gonna thicken the capillary wall, giving you the classic wire looping of the capillaries. And at the end, they will get scarred for life. Once you go to the stage, there is no coming back. Treatment, try your best. Steroids, cyclophosphamide, very few patients respond. It's a very ugly disease. It usually progresses to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, chronic renal failure, end-stage renal disease, and then you live on dialysis or kidney transplant, but it's a very ugly disease. How about membranoproliferative, type one versus type two, subendothelial intramembranous. Either one can split the glomerular basement membrane, that's why it's called membrano, giving you the tram track appearance under the microscope. Hep B, Hep C, cryoglobulinemia, C3 nephritic factor. What the flip does that do? It binds to and inhibit the degradation of C3 convertase. Okay, if you're not degrading it, C3 convertase is gonna persist. It's gonna stay around. It's gonna increase its activity. It becomes overactive. What does C3 convertase do? It converts C3 into C3A and C3B. Go watch my complement cascade video. And then when I activate the complement, what do I get? You get more injury. 
of what? Like, are you killing bacteria? No, no, you're killing your own kidney. Oops, this complement activation is horrible. How does the doctor know that my complement is active? You have consumed your complement proteins, and this leads to decrease C3 complement protein in your blood. You have features of nephrotic and nephritic syndrome and eventually chronic renal failure. Now let's compare between the two. Distinctions, people. Master the distinctions. Let's go. This is called diffuse proliferative. So what do I get? You get proliferation of neutrophils. Okay. And it's diffuse. All of your glomeruli are affected. Which part of the glomerulus? The capillary wall. It is thickened, giving you the classic wire looping. But membrano proliferative, it has membrano in it. Yes, because you're splitting the glomerular basement membrane, giving you the tram track appearance. Under electromicroscopy, using the immunofluorescence technique, you see granular subendothelial immune complexes. Here you also see subendothelial or intramembranous, depending on whether you're talking type 1 versus type 2. So at the end of the day, Who's gonna make the distinction between diffuse proliferative and membranoproliferative? Only the pathologist can. Internal medicine cannot do it. For sure as heck, family medicine cannot do it. And don't get me started on psychiatrists. But because a good doctor is a good observer, you can guess by the patient history, oh, this is lupus, it's probably gonna be diffuse proliferative. Oh, this patient has cryoglobulinemia. History of hepatitis C, oh, I'm guessing it's going to be membrane proliferative. It's a good guess, but to confirm it, you need a biopsy. How can we diagnose them? Biopsy. How do we treat them? Try your best. Since these are immune complexes, give the patient immunosuppressives such as steroids, cyclophosphamide, and others. Then the kidney gets worse, and then you have only three options, the three Ds. Diuretics are not going to solve the underlying issue. They might lower the edema a bit. Dialysis is important because the kidney is toast. If you can get kidney transplant, get it. But at the end of the day, these diseases are so bad. Again, just because I have this doesn't tell you about the severity. It's the severity that matters. I can have very mild membranoproliferative or I can have very severe membranoproliferative. These two patients are very different. Be very careful. And that's why in ancient French, we had two terms to describe these two different cases. There is forme plein and forme fruste the mild versus the severe. If you like this video, you will adore my general pharmacology course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 10 videos with lots of questions, notes, and Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook. And you can watch the first 60 minutes of this course for free on my website. I also have a kidney physiology course on my website, which makes Guyton sound like an amateur. Get a 30% discount towards any course on my website. Just use promo code PANCREAS. May your endocrine and exocrine function always be robust. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.